Just think we can put matrices into row echelon form using Gaussian elimination. We can put matrices into reduced row echelon form using Gauss Jordan elimination. The process is extremely similar. Let me present it along with an example. We'll perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this matrix. And the first step is to perform Gaussian elimination. And we've done that several times already. So I'm not going to show the details again. Let me just copy down what I got. when I performed Gaussian elimination. This matrix is in row echelon form. We want it to be in reduced row echelon form. So there are a few things that we need. Our leading entries all need to be one. That can be our next step to turn our leading entries to one. And how are we going to do that? Well, you might have noticed that there is an elementary row operation that we didn't use when we were learning Gaussian elimination. I said that we could multiply a row by a non-zero constant. And we have never had cause to use that elementary row operation. Now we will. Let's multiply this first row by one fourth. You see that doing that turns the leading entry to one, just like we wanted. Ordinarily, we should be cautious about performing multiple row operations at once. I think we can get away with it here because the row operations are so simple. We'll multiply the second row by one over two. And once again, our leading entry turns to, Z, um, to one. We'll multiply the third row by one over negative five halves. Our leading entry becomes one. And now we need this to be zero, this to be zero, and this to be zero. And we're going to use the same method we used for Gaussian elimination except instead of starting up here and working down and to the right, 
we're going to start down here. Make this zero, make this zero. Then we're going to go up and to the left, use this one to make this zero. And we're going to be performing the same elementary row operations we used for Gaussian elimination. That is to say, we'll multiply this row by a constant, add it to the second row to turn this to zero. Then we'll multiply this by a constant, add it to the first row to turn this to zero. So to make this zero, we need a negative three halves. We'll multiply the third row by negative three halves. and add it to the second row let me see negative one half is negative five tenths and we'll get our new second row We wanted to turn this three halves to zero, and we have. Now we'll turn this one fourth to zero. We'll multiply the third row by negative one fourth. and we'll add it to the first row. And we'll get our new first row. We wanted everything above this leading entry to be zero, and it is. We move up and to the left, and now we'll make everything above this leading entry be zero. So we'll multiply the second row by negative one halves. And we will add that to the first row. Let me see what happened. I made a copying error. We will add that to the first row. And we'll get our new first row. If our matrix were bigger, we'd keep going just up and to the left, make everything above the leading entry zero, up and to the left to the next leading entry, make everything above that be zero, and we just keep repeating that process until the matrix was in reduced row echelon form. For this matrix, well, this is in reduced row echelon form, so we're done. One quick piece of terminology. This Gauss-Jordan elimination breaks 
breaks into two pieces. We didn't show the details in this video, but the first step is to put the matrix into row echelon form. Then we put the matrix in reduced row echelon form. In the context of this process, putting the matrix tricks into row echelon form is called the forward phase. And once you've done that, putting the matrix into reduced row echelon form is called the backward phase. And this isn't a numerical course. I don't want to make a lot of notes about numerical algorithms, but it's worth knowing that relatively speaking, performing the forward phase is slow, whereas the backward phase is fast. So usually, if they're going to put your matrix into row echelon form, you might as well go all the way and put it into reduced row echelon form, especially if you're working on a computer or a calculator. It doesn't take a lot of time to go from here to here relatively speaking.